were halfway through our first season with NIU, and we were sitting at a 3-4 record on the year so far. The season did not get off to a great start for us with a loss at home to FCS Midwest, which was followed up by an expected loss to a ranked Notre Dame team. Conference play at least got off to a hot start with a win against Buffalo, and an upset on the road over former NIU head coach Dave Doran in the NC State Wolfpack with an unbelievable last second field goal to win that one. An 11 point loss the following week though at home to UMass was a tough pill to swallow, but we bounced back with a big time win over Bowling Green on the road, although unfortunately we lost last week's game against Toledo in a high scoring shootout where we saw junior quarterback Ethan Hampton throw for almost 400 yards in a game with 6 touchdowns. That brings us to where we are in this episode which was 3-4 and four with a 5th place conference record of 2-1, and one. but the toughest of our conference matchups, at least on paper, have already happened for us with the Toledo and Bowling Green game. I just wanted to take this episode to look around the country at the rankings, Heisman watch list, and of course, I couldn't forget about our recruits. The Huskies were currently the top team in the MAC when it came to total offense, and even though our passing game was only ranked 34th in the nation, back on the 1100 rushing yards we had, and our total offense was ranked 4th in the country. That was due to redshirt junior Ethan Hampton who had a 72% completion rate on 240 attempts and had thrown 24 touchdowns to 7 interceptions, even though some of those interceptions had been crucial pick sixes in some of our losses. His top target this season had been senior tight end Grayson Barnes with 555 receiving yards, but it was the redshirt freshman Kyle Thomas who led the team in touchdown receptions this year with 10. Senior halfback and offensive captain Ontario Brown was having a fantastic season as he had put up almost a thousand yards in the first half of the year and was averaging almost seven yards a carry. Our defense on the other hand was ranked dead last in the MAC conference this season and despite being a top 25 defense last year with nine returning starters we were a bottom 10 defense nationwide this season. Our leading defensive player was senior linebacker Jaden Dolphin with 65 tackles so far and the senior defensive back Jashan Profet led us with two interceptions on the year. Here was an updated look at the Heisman watch headed into week nine of the season as Riley Leonard was in 5th place with 2,404 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions, and we knew firsthand how good of a quarterback he was this year. We also played the quarterback in 4th place to a senior Grayson McCall. He had only led the Wolfpack though to a 4-4 four four record so far with 2,167 yards, 22 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions. The only non-quarterback on this list was receiver Xavier Thomas from LSU with 48 receptions for 840 yards and 11 touchdowns on the season. Above him was QB one for the team ranked number one, Carson Beck, who had posted 2,044 yards, 21 touchdowns, and one interception through seven games. Finally, your Heisman frontrunner halfway through season one was Garrett Nussmeyer, who had thrown for 2,465 yards, 29 touchdowns, and only one interception all season long. Speaking of rankings, this is what the top 25 looked like through eight weeks of season number one. Iowa State had jumped from 19 to 12 with a 42 to 21 win over number 14 U.S. UCF last week, and Notre Dame was close to dropping out of the playoff hunt after a 45-37 loss against unranked Georgia Tech last week. Florida State had moved up 5 from 15 to the 10th spot in the rankings, and an undefeated Syracuse team was sitting at number 9. After Clemson's blowout over Virginia last week, they moved from 14 to number 8, and number 1 Michigan lost on the road to the Illini, which would drop them from number 1 to number 7. Despite losing Nick Saban to retirement, the Crimson Tide were rolling strong still at number 6 in the country, with Penn State, Oregon, Washington, and Ohio State showing up for the Big Ten at spots 5 through 12, and a one-loss Georgia team was your current top-ranked team in the country headed into Week 9. Speaking of Georgia, they held the top spot in the SEC above LSU, and the ACC looked like it was up for grabs between Syracuse, Clemson, Louisville, and Florida State. The Big 12 was just as competitive with Kansas State, Iowa State, Texas Tech, UCF, and Utah all fighting for the top spot, while the Big Ten had six teams all tied for first place as well right now. Meanwhile, out west, the Pac-12 just wasn't quite as competitive, and headed into the halfway point of the season, Liberty looked to be far and away the favorite team in the group of five to secure a spot in the college football playoffs this year. It was now time to take a closer look at the recruits we had signed so far this year, and the recruits we were still going after halfway through season one. We had currently signed nine recruits so far, and had the 44th ranked class in the country right now. The top prospect on our board we had signed was three-star athlete Nick Yeast. Coach Brooks planned on redshirting him as a quarterback his freshman season and then giving him the keys to the offense once Ethan Hampton graduated. Our number two prospect was three-star receiver DeMarco
Marco Vernon. He would most likely take a red shirt his freshman year as well, but with the current receiver room we have, DeMarco could very well end up being a receiver number two for us right away when he starts. Our third ranked prospect was tight end Mitch Kuma, and with two of our three tight ends being seniors and graduating this coming offseason, he was a recruit who would be able to step in and make an instant difference for us on the field. Defensive tackle Stefan Morton was our fourth ranked recruit on the board, and with our 4-3 defense, he was another recruit who could expect to see the field as a true freshman. Shakir Council was the last three-star we had signed so far this year, and while we were pretty deep at the right tackle position, we may see Council make the switch to the left tackle position to help fill depth on our O-line. Coach Brooks had also signed two-star left guard Jamil Kennedy, two-star right outside linebacker Max Brent, another right outside linebacker Kalen Tam, and one-star punter KJ Stark, who was our first ever recruit we signed. We did unfortunately though lose out on the three-star gem Duke Brents, who ended up signing with Iowa State. That did, however, leave us enough recruiting hours to target five additional prospects on our board, but realistically, the only chance we had at landing one of them was three-star defensive end Jamie Sambrilo. We were in a tight race for him against Navy and Georgia Tech, so that is a battle we will keep our eye on going on throughout the second half of the season. We would be starting the second half next episode with the battle for the brown stock against Ball State and then taking on Western Michigan on the road. In our last episode of season one will be a triple header against Akron, Miami, and Central Michigan. Let me know down below what you think our final record will be and if we can reach that goal of five wins this season with NIU and Coach Brooks.